Christian Blackborn here at HAI 2022 in Dallas, representing Standard Aero uh, for the Stable Light Autopilot program for the AS350. This project is about the introduction of a four-axis autopilot called Stable Light to the light helicopter market to the AS350 and H125 helicopters. It's a collaboration between Standard Aero and Talus. is uh, based on about three years of relationship between Talus Avionics and Standard Aero. Uh, they brought what is now known as the Compact Autopilot System to Standard Aero. Uh, asked us if it could be integrated into the AS350, the 125, a uh, platform that we have a lot of experience in. So we were able to say yes, it looks like it's a great opportunity to bring what would have previously been uh, a technology unaccessible to uh, the Part 27 light helicopter operators. Uh, Standard Aero is an expert in certification and STCs, and so when Talos approached us, we thought it would be a a great opportunity to work with them and so they decided to come to Langley, send their engineers to Langley, send their pilots to Langley and then we've been working on uh, integrating the system to the H125 AS350 and uh, it's been a very actually fruitful relationship. We've uh, really enjoyed working with Talus. The equipment is excellent and uh, their engineers are fantastic. They've almost become part of the family. The system is designed around this core hardware that Talus has developed. It's the CAPS hardware. It's the compact autopilot system and it essentially is uh, installed into the flight control rods uh, that are in the existing uh, flight control system. The flight control rod is removed and a replacement rod with an actuator is installed in place of it. Now that's the stability augmentation side of things. That's the three axis control. In addition to that we have four trim actuators which also are installed in parallel with the rest of the flight controls. Driving your trims, uh, providing force gradient uh, for the sticks. The program has been roughly three years. Of course, COVID has created some issues uh, in production, so it's a little longer than we had anticipated. Um, we've got uh, we've got a f over 100 hours for sure, well over 100 hours of flight test time on three different test platforms. We've been installing in the B2, AS350, B3, and also in the H125. So we've got a really good feel for how the system's going to integrate into various platforms. You know, there are slight differences amongst the AS350s. You know, the original 1977 certification until now, there's been many iterations. So we had to take into account all those changes as we uh, looked at how we were going to make sure that this system was installable for, for the field installer and each operator. Because that really is ultimately our goal, is to make sure that the system can be easily installed by, uh, by the operator in the field. You know, Standard Aero has done quite a few STCs. Uh, we've operated uh, numerous test aircraft both in uh, Vancouver, around the Vancouver area and in the United States. So as we were conducting the flight test program up in Langley, BC, uh, if you came to our facilities and you would have seen us flying that aircraft a lot, making sure that the system is reacting properly to the aerodynamic loads, the aerodynamic uh, flight control inputs required for that specific aircraft. So essentially the system is tuned to meet the specific aerodynamics of that helicopter and the way that the, uh, the flight control system performs. The benefits of the Stabilite system are many fold really. They're, at the baseline there's a stability augmentation system and attitude retention which we expect will be used at the most fundamental level all the time by the pilot. It doesn't have to be, it can be shut off but once I think the pilot gets used to using that it's going to be the standard for how he's operating. Then there's also the upper modes. Uh, they're going to introduce all of those basic um, and, and high level modes that you typically only see in commercial or IFR level um, autopilots. It's a classic uh, nav modes and um, you know airspeed holds, etc. But on top of it, some of the biggest benefits are going to be the safety augmentation modes. So safety modes being things like uh, our go round, which uh, introduces a stable climb, wings, uh, wings level, flight attitude recovery function is going to put you into a VY climb at about a thousand feet per minute. It's going to help with things like spatial disorientation um, and uh, IMC. We all know the aircraft are challenging to fly. The environment is constantly changing. So we're trying to take that load off of the operators. And we know this kind of equipment has been uh, available to Part 29 IFR operators for a long time. And it's really not fair that it hasn't been available to the Part 27 operators. So we're bringing it to them. And there's reasons they've been using this uh, hardware in those Part 29 operations. It just makes it safer. Uh, now it's going to be made available to our light helicopter pilots at an affordable price and we're going to see some serious safety improvements I'm sure. And as far as the missions that it's applicable to, I think part of the intention and purpose of this uh, demo tour that we're doing right now across the southern US and up uh, the west coast of the United States 
is to engage those operators and to help uh, learn from them and show them the system and what it can do for them. We're going to be asking experts uh, from coast, well, from the southern, near the southern border all the way up through California, all the way up to the Canadian border, how they think they could use the system. And I think because it's such a new system to this type of market, there's many potential utilize, utilizations of it, excuse me, that, uh, uh, that we have yet to be discovered. As an STC developer, we are constantly striving to ensure that our kits are available and installable by anybody in the field. The kits are going to ship with, a, uh, with nearly ready-made wiring harnesses that will be easily uh, fit into the belly of the helicopter. And the actuators themselves come already embedded in flight control rods, so they're going to just be a bolt-out, bolt-in installation. Uh, we've also taken into account the most common avionics that you'll find in the AS350 helicopter. Um, we've been looking at a number of different kinds of configurations, so the, this design is, is uh, intended to be compatible with virtually every common uh, aircraft configuration on the market.